My name is Sean Thomas and I am the founder of First Responder Conferences. Our mission is just to break the stigma, provide education, tools and resources to get our first responders through these difficult professions. My husband, he had been on the SWAT team for about 18 years, on the department for about 27 was enduring some organizational stress as well as cumulative stress and was coping with alcohol. It got to the point where he said, I need help. And I said, great, now what? I didn't feel comfortable going to our department and sharing that information with them because I wasn't exactly sure what that was gonna look like. So I searched and found a confidential resource and we got him the help that he needed. During that whole process, I realized if we're both first responders and we don't know where to get help, there's gotta be other people out there. We want to make sure that they have confidential resources because there are a lot of first responders that don't want to go to their department for help. Um, they're afraid of getting fired uh, or you know, in trouble and so we just want to make sure that they know that they're not alone and if they need to reach out for help that people like us, uh, first responder conferences and there's so many other people that we have networked with and partnered with um, that have resources for them. I am also the wife of a U.S. Army veteran who deployed overseas several times. Um, he is also a fourth generation fire chief, uh, just retired from the city of Salisbury. Um, so I am incredibly aware of the toll that being a first responder takes on the first responder and those that are at home waiting for them. So we need to get the word out that it's okay to reach out for support. I think this is of critical importance that we have this conference. As law enforcement leaders, we recently started doing a deep dive into mental health and wellness for our first responders. And I firmly believe that we as law enforcement leaders owe it to our men and women they are dealing with traumatic incidents on a daily basis. So it's our responsibility to break down that barrier, that stigma of getting help in this type of profession. Our brains were not made to deal with that type of trauma without the appropriate resources and intervention. These traumatic incidents that we go through should not be what defines us. What should define us is the impact we have on people after these incidents. What do we learn about it? How can we encourage other people to be better, to be stronger, uh, how to be more resilient? It's all related. Resiliency is the ability to bounce back. If you imagine a plant, when, it, when a plant doesn't have what it needs, it wilts. In this career, we need support, we need help, we need services. We're not going to fix our own problems. And if you're resilient, you bounce back. But where are we bouncing back to? What if you weren't in a great place before you bounced back, right? As a spouse of a law enforcement officer, I, I see my spouse and a lot of the attendees that are here. Um, some of the spouses that are here, I see their struggles that they deal with trying to help their first responder loved one. Um, we have different therapists that actually come that help family members like myself because it comes from all sides. The first responder sometimes may not seek the help, so the spouse has to seek it for them. And it's nice to have the therapist here learning how best to serve this population. In my opinion, I think the stigma is being broken. I think a lot of people would not be able to tell you, oh, I didn't, I didn't think there was a mental health issue. I think they're very aware there is. All right, so what do we do now? And so what, how do we do? That, that, that's, that's, I think, the next step in the continuum of change uh, for first responders. Okay, we know we have a problem. We know we need to combat stigma. We're doing that. What now? Well, what now is here. It's starting here, shaking hands with people, meeting someone on a first-name first basis. How can we help each other? Because every time we had a conference, we found that people were reaching out for help. We had people saying it was beneficial. I've had people call me and tell me that it saved their life, and so therefore I became really passionate about it. And now we just finished our 37th conference since 2016, and we have many more conferences planned in the future. Coming here is the first step in understanding that you need to take care of yourself. We can't help the we until you take care of the me. It's great to have the information. It's better to know who to call and when to help you out when you need it. We all need someone to talk to, and that's an important message too. Whether you're the, ch the, the chief or the sheriff or the fire captain, know that you can reach out to also to your team to discuss something that might be bothering you. 
been through a lot of stuff in my life uh, that I've been able to grow from and, and come out of some dark places. So anything I can do to try to help, I think kind of my mission is to help the next person. We take confidentiality very seriously. Um, we have a lot of people that will reach out to us that don't want their agencies to know because there's still this huge stigma of, you know, I'm not fit for duty if I ask for help or, or I'm not going to be able to do my job or my department's going to look at me differently because I asked for help. This is a place where they can show the emotions that they need to let go in order to heal and be productive in what they're currently doing. They come together in a safe environment where they feel like they can be vulnerable, but they're not gonna have repercussions for doing that. In order for other people to understand what it's like, I think you have to have people that are sharing their own personal experiences that are willing to be vulnerable in front of other people, which as first responders, that is an incredibly difficult task to do, but I think it makes the connection to those people even stronger. As a veteran myself, uh, I find it incredibly helpful and cathartic to hear some of the stories, the authenticity that you see at a conference like this. The speakers are selected from among their peers regionally, so uh, they have some regional knowledge, but then she brings them in nationally as well. And their stories are so authentic and so powerful, they connect with the audience in a way that I don't think many people could fathom without actually being present for one. I just want people to know that we're here, um, number one, that they're not alone. Um, and if they need anything, that we're here to help however we can. So please feel free to reach out. If people are interested in bringing something like this to their area, please contact us. We're very grateful and honored to be having these conferences in different areas for those people that want to make wellness a priority.